Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we'll be taking a BIOS tour of Gigabyte's B450M DS3H version 2. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at Gigabyte's B450M DS3H V2 BIOS. Uh, pretty straightforward, it's not really a great deal in this one. It is a B450 chipset. And uh, yeah, there's a few sections in there which may be of interest if you're planning on doing a mild bit of overclocking. So let's go straight over to the computer and take a look. Okay, so starting off on the first page. So if you go into the BIOS, pressing delete is how you get into the BIOS on this board. And uh, yeah, this is the first screen. So normally you get the system screen. So you get the system information. So the model name, B450M DS3H V2. BIOS version, we're currently on the updated version, which supports uh, 5000 series processors. So we're on F60H. BIOS date is the uh, 2nd of the 4th, well, 4th of the 2nd actually, 2021, and there is the BIOS ID. Also, we can get to change our system language, system date, system time, and the access levels. So let's go through methodically, we'll go from one to the other. So first of all is MIT, which is basically their kind of overclocking utility. So first of all, we've got advanced frequency settings, so pressing enter, we can go into there, you've got your CPU clock control, so you set it to 100 megahertz for your kind of... Uh, link between the chipsets. You've also got your graphics clock frequency and your graphics core voltage. So if you're using an APU, such as a Ryzen 3 2200G or 3400G, that kind of thing, you can actually go into these and manually change the clock frequency. All you need to do is just type in the number and yeah, set it to whichever one you feel is appropriate for your particular setup. Same with the voltage, so depending on what voltage you want, so 1.1, 1.2, etc., whatever, you can put those in there. Also, next up, we've got the CPU clock ratio. Now, this has been slightly overclocked. Normally, this will be set to auto, but I've put it as a manual overclock to 3.7. So we could actually increase that a little bit. So let's call it uh, 3750, hit enter, and then on reboot, it's gonna be 3.75 gigahertz. So you get the general idea. For this particular processor, we could probably do 3.8, but we'll set it to that for now and see how things go. Also, moving down, we can go into advanced CPU settings. So Again, CPU ratios in there. You've got core performance boost, which is basically precision boost overclocking. That is currently set to auto. So if we uh, press enter that, you've got disabled or auto. Cooling quiet, enabled or disabled. And SVM, or virtual machine mode, that's enabled. And you've got your P-state adjustment. So in P-states, you've got a couple of options there, zero, one, and two. Um, we'll leave it set to one. Global C-state control, auto, disabled or enabled. Power supply idle control, again, typical, low or auto. Generally, these are probably left set to auto unless you have a specific reason to change them. Uh, down core control, you can choose the amount of cores. Just obviously, leave that to auto, ideally. And SMT mode, again, that is the um, hyper-threading type of thing. So leave that to auto unless you have a reason not to. So press uh, the escape key, takes you up a level. So next we can go down to extreme memory profile or XMP settings. So currently, as you can see in profile one, I've got my RAM set. You can choose disabled, so it'll just default to kind of 2133 or 2400 or 2666, whichever your RAM supports natively. XMP you can enable, so profile one on here. So now that jumps up to DDR4, 3000 megahertz, CL15 at 1.35 volts. Also, you've got your system memory multiplier, so you can go in there and you can type in a manual adjustment. So you can put 3.2 to give you 3200 RAM, you get the general idea. So, and then it gives you the memory frequency at the bottom there to tell you what you've done when you've changed it. So that's auto and let it just do what the XMP wants to do. So that's that section. So we press escape and we go into advanced memory settings. And then you can obviously tweak the voltages and also the latencies, etc individually, so just press the down arrow or up arrow, you can go through and manually change all those. Again, if you're not entirely sure, probably best off leaving that well alone, but certainly for those uh, out there that like to tweak these settings a little bit, you do have that option. Moving down, you've got advanced voltage settings. So again, if you're doing overclocking on a Ryzen 3 2200G, you want, maybe want to change your V-core values, um, either underclock it or overclock it, whichever you want to do. Same with the V-core SOC, you've got options there. And also you've got your DRAM voltages you can play around with also. But those really probably left set to auto unless you really know what you're doing. 
Next up, we've got PC Health. So click on that one. You've got the uh, reset case open status. You've got that case open, yes, uh, V cores, etc. Just gives you basically the, the information about the individual voltages. So not really much you can do in there. Next one is miscellaneous settings. So you've got your PCI Express X16 slot configuration. So if you're uh, using a different graphics card that only supports a certain generation, you can set it to Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3. Uh, again, probably best of less set to auto. And PCIe slot configurations get to auto, again, for the PCIe slot on the board rather than the actual X16 or graphics card slot, you can set those independently, which uh, can be quite handy for troubleshooting. Maybe if you've got a slightly older capture card, which is PCI Express, you might want to dial that in as PCI Express Gen 2 or something. So yeah, that's quite useful. Uh, SPM mode, disabled or enabled, and you've got LO's entries, L1 entries, all that kind of stuff. Again, you're probably best off leaving that as is. 3D Mark 01 enhancement, uh, that used to be useful for doing benchmarks, that kind of stuff, but realistically it doesn't do a great deal so i would leave that disabled as is the default setting then you've got smart fan 5 which is uh, pretty decent so this is gigabytes implementation in the bios of the uh, smart fan 5 so you've got fan control speed control all that kind of stuff temperature warnings and you can set your cpu fan control to a manual or you can set it into predefined settings so silent full speed or manual normal it's kind of like yeah <laughs> pretty much normal as you can see, I've set a manual curve just to uh, please my uh, ears and that kind of stuff. So yeah, you can set that curve however you want. Basically just drag these uh, around to wherever you need them to be. Adjust the curve. The BIOS on this is a little bit slow to uh, respond in my opinion, but uh, yeah, it is usable. So you've got your fan control temperature inputs. So you can choose whether you take it from the CPU, GPU, uh, various other sections on the system, all that kind of stuff. Temperature interval, so that is how quickly it registers it. So that's like three seconds. Fan CPU fan control mode got PWM. So if you're using a, uh, a different type of fans and you want to use it on voltage, you can set it to that or auto if you just want it to do its own thing. I find with my particular CPU cooler, it works better with PWM being manually selected rather than auto. And also you've got uh, CPU fan stop, so you can have that enabled or disabled. I'm actually going to leave that disabled because I don't really want it to uh, to ever turn off because it is an APU, so that is best. Um, also, uh, CPU fan fail warning, when you change that to fan stop mode, it will also disable that, so yeah, you get the general idea there. So it shows you temperature on the top there, if there's 31 degrees C is the CPU temperature currently. And the fan speed is around about 800 RPMs. Also, you've got your other sections there for CPU, chipset, your uh, VSOC MOS, System 1, and your VRM MOS. So, as you can see, VRMs are looking pretty decent. 42 degrees, it's not too bad at all for a relatively budget board. So, that is it for the Smart Fan 5 section. And then you've got QFlash. So, you can go to QFlash. If you've got a USB drive installed at the present with a uh, appropriate BIOS on there you can choose to update the BIOS or alternatively if you've got a USB which is blank you can choose to save your current BIOS if you want to do some messing around in that way again general BIOS flashing utility it's actually quite good pretty straightforward we did actually do a video on this a little while back which uh, we'll link so if you do want to do a BIOS flash we can uh, walk you through that so that is it for that particular section There's not really anything else we can show you there so you've got system which is the main one we saw first of all. So BIOS, we've got uh, boot option priorities. So uh, boot option number one and number two. So depending on what you want it to boot to, so whether you're in UEFI or whether you're in CSM mode, that kind of thing, you may want to choose different drives. Also, you can click on that, enter, and any available drives will be uh, available for you to actually boot from. So you can choose them there. You've got your boot up non lock state. So I generally keep mine on. Security option is system. So full screen logo show, you can to have that enabled or disabled, whichever you choose to do. Fast boot, enabled or disabled. CSM support, so if you've got slightly older uh, peripherals, and maybe older drives with maybe Windows 7 or Windows 8 or something which doesn't fully support UEFI, then you can, uh, you've got CSM support. I'll leave that enabled on this one. LAN PXE boot option, so if you want to boot from your LAN, you can do. Uh, default is disabled and storage boot option control, legacy only, or you can have UFI only or disabled. 
Uh, I leave that as legacy only, that seems to be the default solution. And other PCI device ROM priority, not entirely sure what that is actually, but uh, yes, yeah, so you've got options for UEFI, UEFI only, disabled, legacy only. So we'll leave that uh, as it was. Option there for setting a administrator password for the BIOS, and also you can set a user password for the BIOS. So if you want someone just to be able to access the system but not access the main features of the BIOS, you can set a regular user password. If you want a admin password, if you're a system administrator, then you can set your own password there so then you can get into the BIOS and make changes. Next up is peripherals. So we've got the uh, AMD CPU uh, trusted platform module, so you can have that enabled or disabled. Initial output display, I've got mine set to uh, IGD video because we've got onboard graphics. So we're using that. Uh, obviously, if you're using a graphics card, you can set it to PCI Express slot one, or if you're using the bottom slot or whatever, then you can choose it slot two. Again, choose whichever one is more suitable to you. RGB Fusion, you can turn the, uh, the onboard LED on or off. Entirely up to you which you do there. RGB Fusion for the LED strip. So RGB Fusion onboard LED, for those of you not sure, actually around the, um, the sound chip on the board, there is an LED which lights up, so if you don't want that on, then actually we'll set that to off. So there is a difference there. So that is basically what surrounds the audio chip in the bottom corner. Also we've got RGB Fusion, so that's the LED strip which you can plug in. It's a four pin, 12 volt address, non-addressable strip you can plug in. Uh, HD audio controller enabled or disabled, so you can choose that. If you're using the onboard sound, you'll need to keep that enabled. Uh, above 4G decoding, you can have that disabled or enabled. Entirely up to you, doesn't make a great deal of difference either way to be honest with you. Uh, trusted computing, so that is for the tr TPM module if you've got it installed. You've got super IO configuration, so serial port, I've actually got it disabled because we don't use a serial port on this one, so just something we don't have to worry about. USB configuration, so you've got legacy USB support. Generally, I will uh, keep that enabled all the time. You never know what you're gonna have to plug in. Uh, XHCI handoff, so that is for basically allowing USB 3 ports to be used as USB 2 ports during BIOS and uh, boot stages. USB mass storage driver support, so you're enabled or disabled. You can actually if disable that so that people can plug in USB drives to kind of boot from or to copy data before Windows is loaded, that sort of thing. So yeah, you can basically disable the ports effectively with that. And you've got the uh, port 60, 64 emulation. You can have that enabled or disabled. And Let's go back into that, cancel that. So network stack configuration, uh, you can have that enabled or disabled. And NVMe configuration, so if you've got an NVMe drive, then you can set the uh, configuration there. We don't you have one in this system, so it's come up no NVMe device found. Next up, we've got the AMD CBS, which is basically the overclocking utility. So you've got your P-States, uh, enable IBS, memory interleaving, for dual channel, etc. Uh, DRAM controller configuration, so you can go into that, and DRAM power options, power down, etc. Slightly advanced features there, but again, if you want to, you can uh, you can have a little bit of a play around in there. You've got your P-States and throttling as well, so you do have to uh, agree to the terms and conditions there. So you can set the P-States and all that kind of stuff if you want to get into overclocking slightly more. Next up is the uh, Realtek PCIe Gigabit Family Controller, so that's the onboard Ethernet, which is based around the Realtek PCI Express chipset. Go into that, and you've got the drivers, names, etc., release dates. Not really anything you can do in there; it's just information about the the actual ports and the MAC address, that kind of thing. Get that set for there. So chipset, you've got your uh, I/O MU set to automatic, enabled or disabled. Leave it as auto. Integrated graphics got set to auto. You can force or disable. Again, we're using onboard graphics on this, so I leave it as auto. SATA mode, you've got the option for HCI or RAID, so if you want to set up a RAID controller, you can do. Uh, NVMe RAID mode, you technically can't do because there's only one NVMe slot on here, so that's disabled anyway. Uh, APU SATA port enabled, then that's enabled. So because the APU has basically a chipset or part of the chipset enabled for your SATA ports, it's not really described very well there, but anyway, so yeah, you can use the uh, the CPU SATA ports via the PCI Express bus, and you've got hot plug enabled or disabled, so we've got that disabled because really you don't want to hot plug those. 
and you've got the chipset SATA ports enabled, so you can have those enabled or disabled. Yeah, that is uh, pretty much it. Also, at the bottom there, it gives you tells you what drives are actually installed. As you can see on SATA port two, we've got a SATA three based drive, which is our 480 gig SSD, and nothing else installed in the system. So next up is power. So you've got AC back. So uh, depending if you have a system crash, you can have it so it's always off always on or whatever it was previously on so generally leave that it always off unless you have a reason to do it uh, power on by keyboard you can choose disabled or enabled or password or keyboard nice all that kind of stuff power on by mouse uh, you can have enabled or disabled or move or click so that's quite useful if you're in a lower power state you can use double click to wake up the system also erp so that's the energy saving so we've got that disabled to squeeze as much power as we can out of the chip Soft off by power button is uh, instant off. You can set that to a delay, all that kind of usual stuff. Power loading set to auto, you can choose enabled or disabled. And resume by alarm, you can have enabled or disabled, and then you can set up wake up times, etc., for the pit system. Wake on LAN is enabled, probably worth keeping that just in case. And high precision event timer is enabled, and CSA 2019 ready is disabled. So last up is save and exit. So we've got save and exit setup. We've got exit without saving. So if you don't want to make any changes, uh, if you've just done a BIOS reset or a system's behaving badly, then you can load the optimized defaults. That's quite handy. And also you can choose a boot override. So if you've got an additional USB drive installed, then you can choose that if it's listed here. And also you've got save and load profile. So you can actually save a couple of profiles of the BIOS and then you can load those up at will. So you can have like an overclocking profile, a standard profile, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, a few choices there. So that is uh, pretty much it. So we're gonna do uh, save and exit setup. And when you press that, you get the option to save configuration and reset, which basically reboots the computer. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so there you go. There is a BIOS walkthrough of the Gigabyte B450 MDS 3H version 2. Uh, for those who are not sure, the version 2 basically has a fully digital VRM as opposed to the previous one, which had a hybrid kind of digital analog uh, VRM. So yeah, effectively, this is the better version of the board. Slightly better technology overall. They've lost one of the phases kind of thing for the analog system and gained a little bit of extra overclocking potential out of this board and also possibly a little bit more reliability due to the digital nature of the VRM. Anyway, I've whittled on for way too long. Please do let us know what you think of this board in the comments section. And if this video has been helpful, don't forget to give it a like and all that kind of YouTube stuff. So that leaves me to say, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.